Give the floor to the representative of the um, Organisation Internationale pour uh, les pays et moins avancés. Thank you, Vice President, and Special Representative Ms. Gamba. OIMA wants to highlight the words you stated in 2017. We are all to blame. We have the tools and resources to better protect children, even in situations of armed conflict, but we have failed to do so. Regarding Yemen, evidence indicates that a significant increase in the recruitment and use of children by Houthi militias over the past three years have become more systematic. The total number of children being recruited and used in the conflict by the Houthis is estimated to be over 25,000, including children under the age of 10 years. Even a Houthi senior leader recognized earlier this year to the Associated Press to have been recruited 18,000 children since 2014. However, having considered several reports based on UN monitoring and reporting mechanisms, OIMA believes that the number of children recruited in Yemen do not reflect the dramatic increase of these practices against minors. The Houthi militias forcibly take children from their homes and push them to fight in the front lines. These children are inflicted an intensive ideological extremist program of three weeks to one month duration. Then they are sent to a training camp to attend a military training course for another month on the use of weapons, mines and explosive devices. And afterwards, they are sent to the butterfly. Moreover, the militia goes door to door telling the progenitors of children that they have to either hand over the children or pay their compensation for the war efforts that the militia does. Madam Special Representative, which steps could, t could be taken by your office to ensure that the real number of children recruited is really considered when working towards the release? I thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, this was uh, the last speaker that we could accommodate at this meeting. Uh, and I, I will give the floor to Mrs. Santos Pais for her concluded remarks. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice President. Many thanks. I know that we need to be telegraphic. Thank you so much for the many important comments, good news, uh, reflections, and uh, uh, questions for additional information. I will be delighted to meet with each and every uh, for the things I will not be able to address. But I want to address two issues, first of all, uh, that have been uh, touched upon. The question of digital literacy for children. And as you know, for young people, uh, the cyberspace is really part of uh, daily life. And cyberspace is the new playground for young people uh, since very early age. There are many things that are happening around the world that can empower, inform, and protect children from risks, but the risks are also growing and we need to be extremely alert to prevent children from being impacted by them. But uh, two from uh, Italy and Switzerland in particular, questions were raised as to what digital tools can we promote and I would like to invite you to look into our annual report where a description is, is made of incredibly important and promising experiences led by young people using information and communication technologies to sensitize their peers, to mobilize parents, teachers and others, but also to achieve change. Uh, I can think about the important examples that are placed there of India and Malawi where young people using very important digital tools have promoted changes in relation to the prevention and protection from child marriage. But I want to especially illustrate with what has been done in relation to bullying and the protection from cyberbullying. As I mentioned earlier, a month ago, before a very high level uh, meeting of ministers, a youth manifesto was presented. It was uh, generated in an important meeting in South Africa, but it benefited from the results of an online poll of more than a million children from 160 countries who were together in identifying concerns and recommendations to prevent and address bullying. And their recommendations are very simply are costless, can be achieved, is a question of listening to them. And secondly, uh, of course, what we see happening in helplines and ombuds offices, uh, national independent institutions which are present here in Geneva nowadays, is so important to think about what has been promoted for children to have easy access to information that is sensitive to their needs, to their age, to their gender, as so many of you have stressed. Quickly. 
at Mexico and others mentioned the importance of early childhood. You know, we think so often about the cost of violence against children, 7 trillion US dollars every year. But we know that if we invest in early childhood, if we promote social protection systems, if we are clear in the legislation of banning all forms of violence against children, if we work with families and if we work from the community up to the national level, in fact, investment in early childhood can uh, curb the impact of violence and can in fact eradicate and break the vicious cycle through which children grow up in so many parts of the world. But I, I want to finish uh, again by recalling what you have stressed, the strategic year we have in 2019. But being strategic cannot be being symbolic and being just nice for us to refer here and there. It has to be it has to make a difference in the life of children. And over the past 10 years uh, of my own mandate, we have seen the, the very strong foundation that has been laid in, in terms of legislations and policies and data and professionals that are better trained across the world. Ten years ago, violence against children was a concern of very few. Today is a priority in the international policy agenda, including in the sustainable development agenda, which has that beautiful principle of leaving no one behind, but we can only address it if children are placed first. So let me just finish by saying violence against children and protecting children from violence is a human rights imperative. It is a question of good governance. It is a question of good economics. It's a smart thing to do and it's easy to achieve when there is strong political will to, to do it. I feel deeply uh, satisfied by what we have been achieving together, but I feel very impatient by everything that remains to be done. And I just want you to never forget the ambition of children out there in the world, 2, million, two billion point two children, who expect from you the action of every day to transform the dramatic uh, toll of violence into a world where violence does not take place. I'm confident that that reminder will continue to inspire your action in the future, and I look forward to continue to cooperate with you very closely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Marta Santos Pais. And now I'll give you the floor to Mrs. Gamba for her extraordinarily short concluded remarks. Thank you. I used up all my time. I will be dealing with the 10 questions I received directly and I want to thank you all for your incredible support uh, and patience. Thank you. Thank you twice. Um, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we have concluded our clustered interactive dialogue with the special representative of the Secretary General on Violence Against Children and the special representative of the Secretary General for Children and Armed Conflicts. I want to thank the special representative for their presence and participation today. We're going to have a very, very short break. Thank you.